Hello everyone, in this video we're going to cover these four topics which are basic ones but really useful, so let's get started. There are two ways to install something in RStudio. The simplest one is as usual clicking here and there, so let's click here in Tools and then Install Packages. As you can see it cannot be simpler than that. And now you type the name of the package, for instance you could install a package called ARM or a package called ggplot2 or whatever. As I have this package already installed, I'm going to install one called ggplot GUI, which is basically ggplot for the masses. I'm going to talk about ggplot later on, so this is really simple. And now we click here. We have to check always this install dependencies because sometimes one of the libraries depends on other libraries. So let's click here and wait a little bit. I'm running this in Linux, so sometimes it has to compile the code, but you run this in in Mac or in Windows typically is faster. Okay, and now we have installed the library. If we click here in packages, and we can search, but we can simply try to find it visually. ggplot GUI. And now if I click here in this checkbox, I'm going to load this library. Okay, and that's all. That's a way to install and use libraries. If I want to remove a library from memory, just unclick here and we detach that library. So it cannot be that simpler than that. Okay, the other way is using commands, and as you can see here, the command to install a package is called install.packages. Okay, so okay, nothing new. The other way that you can, the other thing that you can do is try to install packages that are in, in your hard drive. For instance, I'm going to use the set of functions used in, in this course created by researchers here at my university and we're going to do install packages and then instead of using our repository I'm going to use a local file and now we can try to find this okay practice and then the name of the package in this case ML tools version 0028 okay open install and that's all and now we have all the libraries containing that function again we can use this uh, checkbox here for ML tools, so we can simply type library ML tools. We can use the tab var if we want to to complete. For instance, if I take here, click tab, as you can see, it is completed. And now intro, and that's all. So you have information about the library and the developers. Okay, here's my university. Okay, let's move on. The next topic is we're going to cover our vectors. So we've seen before how to create single variables, but in machine learning we, we don't play with variables, but we play with collections of, of variables. And the simplest data type that we have in R are vectors. So vector is a collection of whatever, a collection of numbers, collection of strings, whatever. So let's create a new vector, let's call it V, and we're going to use this function called C, okay? C comes from cat, concat concatenate. So we're going, we're going to concatenate different numbers, for instance, one, two, three, four, and now control return, and we have a new variable here, as you can see in, in our environment, and this tells us that we have four elements from one to four, and the, 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 con the numbers contained in this variable are one, two, three, four, okay? We can create a new vector, for instance, a vector of strings or characters, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, okay? And as you can see here, this is of character type. We have just two elements, Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so this is very simple. What is more interesting about vectors is not creating them, is accessing to their elements. So there are different ways to do that, and this is called slicing. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. Okay, we have four different types of, of basic types of variables. The first one is a number, okay? For instance, one is a number, and actually we could say v equals one, and class one, as you can see, we have numeric. It doesn't matter, sorry, class V, numeric. We could use actually, let's say pi, and as you can see, it's also numeric. So we, we cannot distinguish between an integer number or a real number. The other type has to do with strings, for instance. In R, they are called characters, okay? The other type are logical values. We have true or false, sorry, true, Sorry, in uppercase, true or false. Okay, we can use also simply F, capital F, 
or capital T. These are logical values, okay? We can create logical values also comparing things, for instance, E, sorry, one larger than zero, okay? And as you can see, the output tells us that this is true, okay? So this is a logical. Actually, we can plug this into a new variable, for instance, check one larger than zero. This, is, this syntax is very, uh, I would say, weird, but first we do this operation and then we assign this into this variable. So as you can see, check, and now in the environment, we see that check is true, okay? And if we run this again, one larger than four, you can see here check is false, okay? We're going to use this massively to compare stuff. The last type we're going to cover is one of the most important ones and are called factors. Factor is the same as categorical variable. Okay, we're going to create variables using the function factor, okay? And, and take a look at this. If we use factor v2, what we are going to do is, is create a new, a new array, and in this case, a new vector of factors, but they are not strings. So let's check this. And as you can see here, we have the syntax that tells us that we have two levels, okay? So compare this with v2, and it's completely different. So here we have strings, and we have the quotation marks, and here we have the name of, this, of the value or, or the factor, okay? And this is really interesting because we are going to handle different functions, and we can distinguish between numerical and categorical variables, variables using this one, okay? We can convert between types using the prefix as. For instance, as numeric, if I write as numeric and uh, I use the string 3.1 and then this is going to convert this string into this numerical value and I can do the opposite for instance I could you say as factor uh, I would say male and as you can see here now we have these levels or we could say as character let's say factor female okay and as you can see here, this factor female, if I run only this part, is a factor, as you can see here, with one level, and as character factor female converts that factor into a character again. So, so we can use this as to convert over and over. Finally, to end this video, we're going to see how to extract different elements of a vector. So let's create a new vector called years, and with elements, 1973, 1974, 1975, 1976, and 1970, sorry, 77. In the next video, we're going to see how to do this in a smarter way. Okay, so now we have this vector with five elements from 1973 to 1977. Okay, so we're going to use this is square bracket syntax in order to extract different elements. So if we type years square brackets one, we're going to get, sorry, years, we're going to get the first element of this vector, in this case, 1973. In the same way, for instance, years three, we're going to extract the third element, which is one, two, three, 1975, okay? Interestingly, if we use a negative number, negative index, like years minus three, we're going to get the whole vector without the, th the third element in this case. Okay, so this is very useful. We can also use a vector inside a vector. We could say years one and five, and then this means that we're going to create a, vec a new vector with integer numbers one and five, and then we're going to extract years one and five, okay? So let's run this, and as you can see, the first and the fifth element of this, of this vector. So this is very, pretty interesting. We could, do, we could do the same with a minus here, and we obtain everything but the first and the fifth element, okay? We could also say we're going to extract all the elements in which years is equals to 1974. This is not very interesting because we're basically we're creating here a logical value and using that value to, to create, to extract this number. If we run, if we select this and, and press control return, we see that we are creating a new logical vector, which is false, true, false, 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 okay? And if we plug this logical here, then we're going to find the second element. So this is pretty smart. We could say actually something like years larger than 1974. And as you can see here, if we run only this part, we have this vector, false, false, true, true, true. And if we run this inside the square brackets, we extract all the elements fulfilling this condition, okay? 
And, and the last one, it is more advanced, is the symbol in. So if we write years in this subset, instead of saying elements number one, three, and five, we could say 1973, 1974, and 1977. And again, we obtain a logical vector. And if we plug this vector into the square brackets, years, okay, we obtain something which is pretty stupid in this case but later on we're going to play with different vectors in, in inside whole data frames and this is going to be really useful that's all for today